can inhabit. Oh, a bit of a read and a G2 in the pistol. They start four strong down towards this lower site. And with Nico in connector, that rotate is going to be quick. It may as well be five players down here at B. And as Virtus Pro move in, they will go right into this stack. Nexa with stands. And now with flashes Ooh. in and around him. He is the sole defender left actually in the site. With Nico dead back oh. in con, there's an option to change your mind. But Nexa might remove that entirely. He's got the bomb trapped in here at Monster. G2 keep it even. I said in the group stage, Nexa may be the best P2K on the, uh, player in the game right now. And while there's not much competition, this guy consistently puts up multi-kills in pistol rounds for G2. What a time to do it on that 4B rush, VP cool it off, but they're going back later. Grouping now for the connector, this timing for Hooksy is everything. While he clears the map, they get closer. To whose benefit does this work? Hooksy in the open, dead immediately, and that's opened up the path to A. Well, next is gonna need the ace clutch if he wants to do this. But a one-man army in the pistol so far. But is this the end of the line? Even Jay Bates here lets vehicle in the sight so we can rotate B if Nexa was here, just in case that gambles in. But Nexa's walked every step of the way. No kit. I want to say no chance. VP are not even giving him a single fight. The level to what they've played passively in this pistol round is insane. If he had a kit, they wouldn't be able to stop him defusing the bomb, but those are all if-buts and maybes and Nexa. One thing's absolute, even as he gets these kills, there's no win in the round. Mir locks him out of it, and it's a big start from Mir. Bit of a non-factor on that opener, but here to play on overpass. VP are back. It's hopefully going to be worth the wait in this series. Would hate to see this team just completely crumble and capitulate on the stage. And I think it would only lead into a narrative that VP are becoming more and more beatable as time goes on. Sure, G2, they love this matchup. Hooksy said he doesn't have a problem with reading Jame, and the results do speak for themselves. Major aside with that asterisk, G2 have been fine in this head-to-head. -head. But are VP looking more beatable by the day? Or will they wake up now that they're on their map pick, their home ground? Creeping out monster, it's Norbert with the Mac 10. His team don't need to commit with him here. In fact, he, even he won't. Shows a close contact, forces out nades, flash smoke gone. And you know G2 don't have a lot to play with in this round. Nico is their heavy hitter. Surrounding him very little. But still G2 hold three smokes. They know what they're up against. That's for sure. Yeah, it's something the desk were even highlighting, right? G2, uh very aware that when you're up against Virtus Pro, you, you need to hold on to this util for as long as you can. And VP might think they've done an all right job of getting some of that out of G2, but it's just the one piece. More of these smokes getting dropped now as Monacy smokes off oh. the long side, cleanly done with the Deagle. That puts the fear in Virtus okay. Pro, but Fane, chance smoke spam. Knocks out the one top side defender. 20 seconds as VP move in. Just enough time. How can Nico get involved? That's the question. He's coming out bank side. He can trade Hunter. But VP have rifles and range to play with. Most of them still sit inside of the site. Flit in a great position. One that you would spam on a rifle round, but G2 don't have the weaponry to do so. He is very potent right now. The spam's not doing anything through that smoke. Fame has first contact. Nico needs to nail the trade, or this round is dead in the water. We'll get one, but time is ticking. No kit. VP halfway there. Fame will make it so. Yeah, well done to withstand the force by 
Next uh, chance to do some damage right as the doors close, but clean moves get them past him. And so VP will stick the landing on that conversion. G2 now broke. They went all in on that round. Already some more fight out of the individuals on Virtus Pro. up with a flash maybe pop into water here got a man in the connector but oh they've seen him and quick work Nico trying to find an opener with a deagle DP on biting Jane cleared the boost after the flash. Nico was ducked down. It should never come to matter. They're not taking short. They've got so much space. Someone just needs to get this bomb at this point to ensure the round. They've got A under control. Lock and key here. And Flitch is going to start farming. Oh, careful, buddy. Bridge too far, perhaps, but... For a moment, Mir looked at B like he wanted to take that bomb there. Fame's still calling. He has the entire site. G2 don't even know for certain. It's that slow. VP escort the bomb into A. Dot the I's and cross the T's, don't VP. I mean, G2 may as well see if they can find any more damage here. Throw themselves in at the end, tap the bomb, but he still has util to like put pressure on. Alley oop. They go with that chance to do damage will elude G2. It's one kill off of Nico's Deagle, but that should be the end of the line. Cleaned up, mopped up, and nicely done from Virtus Pro, who go flawless on the back of the pistol. But now the guns come through for G2. Monacy donning that AWP. It makes an appearance at the first chance for the G2 squad. James can join him as well. It would uh, be no helmet against M4s, but. Let's see what he goes for. He will commit. Worth the risk, feels James. Two very fast AWP players. James holds the line and connector. Flick gets aggressive. But that need on the smoke with the spam. G2 keeping pressure down below. Flick still makes it relatively, uh, relatively unscathed. Jizu starting a lot of these rounds 4B so far. Defending against the rush. Hooksy is that rotation player. That to be a lot of pressure on Nico over here on the top site as James searches for this kill. Nico doesn't want to get caught jumping right now, just jiggling between long and toilets. But this leaves him open to timings here. Honestly, he's rotated back up towards upper. And G2, once again, very good job of maintaining the util, right? 35 seconds left on the clock. And Nico is just waiting for when and where to place this smoke. And he's about to lob that in now into the bathrooms. First kill secured. When that smoke in their way, this is a, a very tricky round now for Virtus Pro. Need fame. Another kill out of Nico with fame dead. It's a done deal. VP can't even justify attempting this one. The util is enough to lock them out of it. If one thing is already clear from these first four rounds of play, 
And from what we've seen in this matchup already, it's the G2 are keenly aware of what they're up against and how they want to stop it. Uh, this this util usage has been really, really strong for G2 because not only are they putting pressure on early, which is just going to slow VP's round down, right? You see how James doesn't even continue through connector because they're using nade combos on the smoke and he's scared of a boost perhaps or short water being taken. G2 are also saving just enough to drop smokes at 25 seconds. That's an aggressive play for Nico to move closer, but getting that kill wins the round. Round. Unless Fame comes through and finds Monacy, there is simply no way VP can win it from those positions. So yes, as you say, G2, they are well prepared. And even though you wouldn't expect this of most teams, I still feel like we need to see VP have a strong T side on this map because they so consistently do. Winning halves, even against some of the world's best. So sure, 3-1 off to a nice start, but G2's guns come out and immediately field around. Oh, Monacy with a mid spawn. Close. Making use of these boosts a lot. This is a more standard bathroom crawl here for VP. Trying to play early for a change. And when you get that kill, you just know to go. And with Monacy dead, rotates scrambling on towards upper. G2 already in a bad shape. So far away, VP weren't quite ready for the pace change. And so Norbert's got to begin a very lengthy rotate here. That means for now, these three players for VP have got to hold the line, and it doesn't pan out for Flit. There's still legs on this round. Fane tries to draw it back in a VP's favor. Nice. Getting out with that kill and a well-placed nade from Norbert. Gets rid of the danger that lurked in this round for Virtus Pro. There we go. There's the mastermind, James, realizing exactly how to solve that issue. He notices that G2 stalled him out in these rounds so far, and so the, the solution is so clear. Go for that A-pick. You know, if, if, if he kills Nico, I don't know if he'd be rushed there, but finding Monacy is it, just the canary of the coal mine. It screams that they're 4B, the AWP is on upper, and VP just run in. What a perfect pace change to call in response to the previous round. And even though Monis is scoping there, I don't know if he's really, truly ready for Jame on the angle at 120. No, you're not. I mean, it was, a, it was a way faster round across the board, right? And that is VP learning from their mistakes, both in the one round that G2 found here, but also from the last time these teams matched up back in Copenhagen, right? So that good realization for Virtus Pro. Yeah. One that they had to make, an adaptation that they have to make that's been forced from how G2 have looked to counter them here. And everything is very intentional. All the moves that G2 are making are to slow VP down to keep that late round util effective, right? As much as VP essentially, uh, in, a, in a usual T side here on overpass, walk around the map and kind of uh, peacocking the whole time, right? Like giving the illusion of, yeah. uh, of a presence, putting that pressure on to try and draw out the util. G2 have been doing the same, but they haven't been going about it by slowing it down with smokes. Instead, they're assembling these boosts. They're, they're having Monacy fire off early shots over in middle to give the illusion that that AWP is posted, to try and take the pace out of VP. And so in the same way that G2 have been calling VP's bluff, VP do it right back to them there. G2 call a timeout. Try and find a solution in this gun round. We've got, again, four smokes. And again, a boost. VP changed the tune up long very quick. Again, 130. Look at how deep James got, and he's looking for that A pick, trying to find one of these rifles. No one's even close. Does Fame scale? Again, making this move so early with James covering it just feels made for VP. G2 are not going to be able to figure this one out. The jump spot can come in, but James got the info, and that's passed along to Fame. Did Monacy see him? Yes, he did. 
Trying to clear close, Fame hits the headshot, and VP, they're not committing to this execute, but they are selling one hell of a fake. Oh dear, that will complicate things. James just juggled the gun out of there and threw it out of the map. Smart. Last thing you want to do is arm up Nico. And so G2, it's this B-side defense, but that is where the guns are. They're starting to rotate out. Nexa is left as the sole defender with a boost actually in the back line. Both these guns in a position to succeed, but that boost has been spotted. And with Nexa cleared out, Bomb gets away from Berta's Pro. James so far away, and G2 realize they dropped the bomb. They're going to push in, try and trade out these kills while Flit's panicking. Nade is going to land. Hunter can't stop this bomb no matter what he does. And James' late position is now here on time to close this one up. There was a moment where G2 had all the pieces in the right place. But VP take the kills, take the space, and now look to take the round. Norbert in pits, sees him coming through, and G2 are so hesitant here. Reboost. I might catch Jane, but on the angle with the kill and Nico should save here if he's allowed yeah it really is like a game of chess watching VP not just in general but especially on this map yeah I mean you know uh, I don't want us to mislead anyone here in that VP sure they played these last few rounds very very quickly but the kind of the, the beauty of what they've done is they've let G2 know, okay, we, we know what you're doing and we know how to counter it. And so the the ripple effect on from that is that eventually G2 are going to start using these smokes earlier in the round. They are going to be more proactive with their util to try and take that pace away, right? And so long term, that should facilitate some of these more standard, slower VP rounds and bring their style back into the matchup. You're just getting rid of the counter. And so I guess the big question for me is how long did G2 remain stubborn in holding on to this util? Three smokes and 30. James gone back to spawn to pick up more util as well. A her old heroic move. Wanna see. There's no flash on this fight. If fame gives it, he will fall, but Things better. Back to B for VP. Nate stacking, setting up four strong, and only two G2 players in position. Hooksy's got to be considering that rotation, especially as Nico takes space. He has to clear fame out here. And right now, it just looks like a setup, ready to play later into the round. Nico is in no hurry, but maybe VPR. Next, they're trying to sell flash. Run out. Hooksy, last line of defense down on B, desperately calling for these rotates. They get up into the heavens and they drop through to lend a helping hand. Hunter now posted over towards the barrels. Are they ready for him to be here so quickly? This is facilitated because of the push from Nico. Oh. And so he arrives in good timing. Backstab on a chain. VP now know about the flank. But is that going to be enough as Hooksy continues to hold the line? Did all he had to in defense of this B-side, did Hooksy. And now it's down to Monacy and Nico. Names alone, these are the two players you want here if you're G2. But will they offer up the goods? First challenge is Flit on this short side, Ouch. and Nico will get rid of him. Only mere left standing. The most limited experienced player on the stage for VP. Will he crumble under the pressure, under the weight of Nico? Kit no retrieved, kid. but no round. Mir takes it to tie. And Nico even falling to the bomb blast. Everybody dies. And VP get to keep building this lead. Yeah, Mir didn't know it, but he took the most important kill of two. Monacy with the kit was stuck out CT side, and Nico never had one. Bought just enough time. And Norbert knows that's a round for VP. Man, they're looking red hot. We didn't see this on Anubis individually. It felt shaky and sure. G2 were throwing themselves at VP in a lot of rounds. But right now we're just seeing that trade power of Virtus Pro. With one, often comes two. And they are hitting every single headshot on these BXX. 
6-1, a dominant game the other way on the hardest half in Counter-Strike, T-side overpass, not if you ask VP. Can G2 craft an answer here as this game slips away round by round? Like this, starting to make moves early, disrupt the game, thin VP out at the uh, opening stage of the round. They know about Monacy, they have no clue. Nico lies here and wait. He gets his kill on fame, and Jame just sells him down the river, wants nothing to do with this one. Oh, who sees a connector even covering? Norbert makes a crazy play as that smoke blooms. And VP, yeah, given a little looser round for G2, it comes at a cost. Oh dear, that jump. If Flit just swings, that's his kill. No way he goes through it again. Oh! oh clear him! Nexa gets out, score free, one HP remaining. One HP, the difference. And, like, that's a save, really. Uh, VP gonna call it this early, they're gonna hang around, but their money is in the bin. Despite these wins, it's come down to a couple surviving. And so G2 win it in a 5v2. Nice early move. Nice to see G2 taking some space. They've been relatively passive, right? They're trying to beat VP at their own game, play that clock down. But finally, G2, the wheels come off, and they just go hurtling towards Virtus Pro. Yeah, I mean, you, you saw what VP wanted to do there, right? After they spot the double push in mid, the, the reaction to that is, well, the rotates are going to be very slow, and that's a, that's a lot of resources being used over towards middle. So they try to pick up the pace over towards that B site. But those players on A were always going to take a very long time to rotate, and there was no getting that space back for VP. So it felt like Norbert, even though he's playing within the... The confines of a VP's reaction just goes a, a little too soon to try and take that space over towards B. And they end up getting punished for it. Considering the kind of mental battle that's taking place in this map between Jamin and Hooksy, that's a, a sigh relief round for, for the G2 squad. Yeah, it is interesting to see that Hooksy has said, like, yeah, I don't really, it feels like any other team, I'm not really too bothered calling against Jame, I can make those reads. Certainly proved to be true on Anubis, but a different ball game now on overpass. Oh, in the connector again with the smoke break. VP have somehow not been punished on these fast comp plays. Sure, G2 have not fought inside this position. Getting out is very hard. But G2 have made an effort to keep the pressure on with boost, spam, HE's on smokes, door off every round. It's VP smoke that is limiting the view. Oh, finally, more aggression. G2 take water. First time they've done it all map. It's going to free up a third for A. That's exactly what G2 need right now. Completely done for Nico on the opening. Shot. Even though he brings him low, you really needed that trade. Oh, oh Nico holds ready for on that. for it. Chain tries to punish on the jump up. Oh, might need to they move. really want to deal with Nico. They really want to get rid of him. And even though they do eventually, they're so wounded, they're so hurting. It's an easy round for G2 to close. This one is repelled from the long side, from Nico with that double. No question in his will to win, his form yeah. in this quarterfinal matchup. Ooh, after time would be devastating for Mia. So he won't come swinging. Hussey takes a gun and he gets out. What a play for Nico to be ready for the jump up there when James tries to fake him by flashing the smoke. It's very heads up play for Nico. Gets both his kills. And wins the round essentially off that. VP is just desperately trying to. Wow, that was in the air. He didn't even land it. 
all the meanwhile, G2 was stacked on that top side. It was never going to be easy. Miz forced to give his AK to Jame in this round. He plays Glock armor. What's Jame cooking? as is the case on Anubis, in the right position. Yeah, but something that's good here for VP, they actually have the util if they wanted to, to do this play twice. They can use that to draw out the, the first wave of util from G2. The short control is a problem for VP, though, as they try to move in. Oh, oh. Hunter just caught looking away. And he didn't really get a lot of info from that. It's not like he saw multiple players. That was one guy with a Tech-9 walking at him. Let's make the most of this, say VP. They're going to get a boost up, try and squeeze out another entry. Honestly, he's behind the pillar, though. Covered and comfortable. Fake on the top side. Fame's just going to die for the cause. Nico's going to get that info nice and easy as he runs right by. And this fake will do nothing for G2 still. Nico lets him in. But that other player's rotating B. They know what's coming. Everyone in the right place at the right time for G2. Ouch. Lock finds Nexa. And so Monacy's got to do oh. it. Can't hold on. TikTok. Luxy, there's so little time left. One kill on Jame, and that would win them the round. And he knows it. Oh! Nico even takes the fight. <laughs> and for a moment, Hooksy was scared, scared that that might have been thrown away. But G2 are able to withstand it. Oh, unnecessary. But it doesn't matter when you nail it. Nico, all the risks, through the smoke with a second on the clock, and he still wins that fight. Unbelievable. Oh, you saw the fear yeah. creep into him. He knew he'd won it. Nico puts that into question, but man, Nico is stepping up right now in a huge way on this top side. We talk about G2 and FaZe being teams that they are maybe shaky in the group stage. Maybe they'll go home early, but if you get them on the stage, if you put them in those pressure positions, they will perform. And sure, top four is not enough for this team. But Nico wants it all. Yeah. You know, something I, I can't I can't put into words just how risky, how almost unnecessarily risky that final fight was at the end from Nico. But this is the thing, right? Like the thing with how Nico plays is he is a big risk taker. That one is the, the most egregious example. Yeah. But it, it's throughout the tournament here, you've seen him take those risks, the, the moments that Nico usually excels in. And they've been problematic. They've been 50-50, shall we say, in terms of the success rate from them. But here, here we're seeing Nico enter that, that final form, the form that he was known for all across CSGO. Yeah, Yanko broke down those rounds. We saw those mistakes. They're not happening today, not on the stage. Nico getting flashed in aggressive, but there's three players there, and they jump off the slide and dodge him completely. Monacy out on an island right now, big risk. They spot him with a jump, and he knows it. Got to get out. BBC and Orb, they might not want a tango. Walton their way to long instead. It's only Hooksy here. No support. Maybe this flash could do something. Oh, but he whiffs a spray. Five on three for VP. Monacy still nearby. Hunter's even moved up as well. Faith. Oh, dear. You really want this kill while you've got him boxed in. But no chance to get it. I wonder if VP changed their mind at all. They spotted the AWP earlier. They've just heard an M4 fire off, but they want to stick to their guns here. They learn the AWP is still in play up on the top side, but as they come to this realization, they've given up control of B. And so that kind of forces them into modesty, oh. forces them in to this AWP. Monacy's got the ball rolling. He's a very tough guy to stop once he's got hot hands. And Monacy right now, oh. they're scorching! The third kill from away from Virtus Pro. And in the final few seconds, that kill from Flick could matter the most. They, now they have to get past Hunter, who sits bottom of the board for G2. But he slows them down enough. He buys enough time. There's no winning this for Flick.
Hunter Ramonesi have robbed VP in that round. They earn it by blood. That is a heater indeed. Monesi. What a monster. What a flick. And just enough for Hunter. It's not pretty, but it's a round. And G2 are back in this game right now. The crowd loves it. 6-1 down, 6-5 now. Can G2 split the half like they did in Copenhagen? G2 are looking to mirror that Copenhagen performance across the board. And it didn't feel doable, man. They, they were 6-1 they were down. Well, I hope they don't completely mirror it. There's still Inferno in the pocket. Chance for an even scoreline, that's huge for G2. There was never a world where you thought this was yeah. possible. And now they're right there. Now they're looking to lock that in, and they will. Five straight for G2, and an even half locked in. Curtis Pro had G2 down on the mat, but G2 have managed to wrestle back from 6-1 down. This is now a split half coming into G2's T side. They're gonna have to do a lot of work on VP's best map, most played map in the pool. But so far, G2 have been good for it this series. We are getting a Nico masterclass and flashes of brilliance from Monacy as well. It's time to flip the script and see if G2 can get it done in two. Yeah, and here's the thing, like, to, to go and 
mirror your performance from Copenhagen. They're able to, to show they've learned from that and take it one step further, this time besting them 2-0. and oh. Obviously, back at the uh, the major, it went to overtime here. Oh, no, with the Julies. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, there's no doubting this guy over towards Monster. A, a phenomenal player in this position is Norbert. And so he opens up in the pistol. Oh. Mir can't stand the test of time. It's Nico to tap him out, but the backstab from Flit sticks to the landing. Fames even flanking all the way through Monster. But right now, it's Nico for G2 making what? all the difference. Nico, one more man left to fight him. It's this monster flank that he's not ready for. Oh. No one is. And just next oh, to Fame. A big hat trick on the backstab. And a pistol round saved as they put a stop to the wrecking ball of Nico. What more can Nico do? Those were phenomenal shots and a flick back on short as well. But it's flanks on flanks for VP, a very aggressive CT pistol, and the second backstab is enough. Damn. Nico has set Monacy up with an AK here. No ego in this round. He wants the orping talent on a rifle. And they need him now in this second round because VP trying to convert off their pistol, holding on to their util. I think this is a, a nice idea. And I mean, there's always been a, a great relationship between Nico and Monacy. When you get dropped the AK from your top fragging rifler, and he tells you to go to work with it. Maybe that instills a, a bit of belief in Monacy. Yeah, his score's not pretty, but he wasn't, didn't look cold in that first half. And I mean, the first map, he was excellent. Often not in the position, out or by Jane once or twice. But the one round it mattered, Monacy was there. Can this second chance be what he can show up in as well? VP are three strong on top. But it, here's the thing, if, if G2 get an entry, if this Tech Knight rips Fame's head off, not only are you getting closer, you're getting guns gifted, you're getting armed as well. Support is here, Fame doesn't know where to look. Monacy sprays down two, and that's why you give him the AK. Nico never doubted him, not even for a moment. And VP are left saving their victory. Short-lived here. And after a, a five-round drought, having G2 claw their way back in from 6-1 down to an even half, VP oh. were hoping this was how they could get back to their winning ways. And that is not the case. And what a statement this would be for G2, especially if they 2-0 this series, because everyone, everyone thought that VP were going to do exactly that to G2. 2-0 them, knock them out of the major, not even make it to playoffs. That's really on paper what should have happened when we saw James crash. But G2, they make the most of that. They get to the semis. And now they make a statement. We are in fighting form. We are in championship form in China. And we will win this game every single time. Yeah, I think even the way you, you phrase that point shows why G2 also have their own set of stakes around it, right? I don't think they love the narrative. And so this is their chance to, to, to prove that in current day, they are the better team. James going absolutely cold on this map as well. Going to need that CT orb to be such a huge factor, but it's just delayed by the fact that they lose to that force buy. We won't see it for a while. I like Jane has really done much on either of the maps here for Vertex Pro. Especially not on CT side. Anubis, he was, you know, it was wrong reads, it was wrong positions, but the score still stands. I mean, with the type of AWPer he is, that's a very big deal, right? He's not someone who can afford to make the wrong reads. He, he likes to kind of shelter in place and wait with that AWP to deny real estate and 
when he ends up on the wrong side of the map, you already know what that means for Virtus Pro if the opening kills aren't found, right? He ends up saving, and that's why he had no impact on the first map of Anubis. And it's rare to say, because even in games where we've seen VP lose out, like, you know, high stakes matches, a lot of the time it is Jame performing and his team not being able to match him. We've seen that so many times. And he's trying to drag them through, especially if Mage has gone by. But, oh, this is awkward. He's getting thrown. A lot of pressure put on, but Monacy's equipped to deal with it. Norbert on a big flank. VP rushed around the map, and luckily enough, Nico has that A sight because they're going to come running up Con Jame. Can he do anything here? Jumping in the air. Monacy down. It's still a trade. And with Nico having this control, VP surely getting it locked out of this round. Yeah, even with the nades coming in, it's not going to be enough to stop that plant, but the backstab will stick the landing, and now it's down to a 1v1, and it's Nico ready. has the info. He knows where Flit's coming from. For a plant, though. That's Kid that. aside, Nico doesn't know. Not for certain. Nico's got to be active here. Waiting right now. Bomb tapped. That's going to draw a peek. Nico just calls his bluff. Starting to move out. He's seen him. He's seen him. That's all the info he needed. Nico closes Ooh. the net. Goes swinging wide, but he knows he's done enough to take the round for G2. Yeah, that's a gamble you make on the anti-eco. You have to gamble. They don't have a kit there. So Nico doesn't go swinging. The bomb's a little wide, but Flick could have been on it. And Nico just gets that late jiggle, all the info he needs. And it feels like Nico. I can't think of a, a you know, real issue he's had in this series, a bad round, a mistake, an overstep. Yanko broke down those two pretty awful rounds on the desk coming into this matchup. Rounds where Nico is jumping the gun and leaving Hunter in these clutches. Nico is not doing that. He is winning rounds on his own. This is what you wanted. This is what we waited for. His number two player of 2023 finally back. to staking their claim on this T side. That one's costly, and that's why VP have a little bit in this. Nico's not going to win any awards for that Molotov. Slows down the long take, meant to assist them in clearing out the tree position, and so now they've got to check it manual mode, but no one for VP there. VP kind of eco the last to buy in this one. That might be something that G2 don't really expect. You would expect more investment in the previous round. So there is armor on everyone. There is Flit with this AK, of course, saved. Yeah, I think when you play this VP squad, you treat every round like there could be something in it. That's what everyone says. How's he got an AWP? I don't know. Info getting gathered at the right time. VP went from 4A to 5B. And that re-smoke gives G2 a taste of their own medicine. Looks he needs to play first. with the early spot. They found it out. G2 are moving back up. They've got the top site under lock and key, and even though that spam does good damage onto Nico, it should never be enough to tempt VP back into this round. Perfect call. I don't know if Hooksy heard footsteps. It seemed like VP rotated pretty quiet there, but G2 just make the right read, and Nico can now feast on this rifle. He can't take Flit out. Guns to grab for VP, guns they will make the most of. G2 just play to contain, ensure that VP won't actually go for this round before they start hunting. Nexus patience may pay off too. Cleared, but easily done. A bit of save work for VP, but nothing special, nothing out of the ordinary. And again, a perfect call for Hooksy to make that late rotation. Oh! And even the guns aren't guaranteed. James gets out, Flick can buy him an orb. This is VP requiring a round on the CT side now before G2 steamroll into the semi final. And rather attractively, this isn't a, a G2 
that you have questions around. This is a G2 in the, in the form that you expect. Mir was even next to him, throwing in some utils, so they're both a little wounded from that exchange. This is a, a very exciting G2 to have in the playoffs. Yeah, especially with what's coming up, right? Like, they get that rematch versus Maus if they can get there. And Maus definitely playing a fantastic tournament. We've already talked about the difficulties in playoffs. Now, I will put the caveat on that, that when Maus are in playoffs, they're often playing FaZe and G2, very good playoff teams, you know? That makes it a lot harder, but especially when G2 are playing to this level, I think Maus have really got their work cut out for them. G2 through the smoke in the toilets. Hooksy won't commit to that long take. And they're still waiting for aggression. Nico's just checking this long timing. Will he find it? He's looked away, and Fame has the round in the palm of his hand. Oh, Nico's got a funny feeling. Doesn't know. Hooksy dead. Oh. Nico followed up onto his Fame. Threads his way through the back line of the G2 ranks, and that leaves them with this three man exec down at lower. VP are pretty light down on this side of the map. But those rotates are coming, the flanks are arriving, and G2 can't go any further. There's no time to win this. Monacy ready for the backstab. Sick. It's a nice shot, sure, but it won't win you the round. VP finally cook up a response here. The whole round, Nico's thinking about that as well. He keeps checking his back and looking for this flank from Fame, but he finds a very nice timing. Fame. Strong performance in this map. He's second in the server right now to Nico. And great supportive flash on B from Mira. Comes out as Hunter's entering, so a little bit blinded as he comes to hunt down Norbert. The only way that round would have been turned on its head. We called it a requirement for VP. Well, they, they fill out the form. They, they needed anything, right? And you'll take a round that goes down as cleanly as that. One that you win as decisively as that. But G2 are by no means knocked out from that one round win. They even call out a timeout here. At the last 10 rounds, VP have won two of them. And so even though this might be a close game in terms of the scoreline, and they might have just broke through there, it can't be a one and done for Vertus Pro. They are still the ones on the back foot. This is tense now. G2 still know that despite what they've done before, despite what VP do consistently, this is still a very difficult T side. Jim gets boosted, okay. Popping out water. They're gonna find out the hard way. Luckily, Nexa lives. Yeah, you you count your blessings there if you're Nexa. That is not normally a tag. That could have very easily been the man advantage for Vertus Pro. Spot that orb down towards B. And they go to reroute towards upper, but look where Jame is quickly repositioned to on this orb. You feel like you've reacted as quick as you possibly could here if you're G2. And yet that VP AWP still lies in wait. Flash around short, fame. Goes for the check. She's nothing. Bomb rotates back down towards lower. Mir has just left the B site. Are him and Jame going to swap places, or are they buckling down on upper with the triple stack? It looks like the latter right now. And so there is a window for G2 where they've only got two players to worry about down here at lower. I can't believe VP is still triple upper, even you know with all the info they have with the re-smokes coming down, and Nico is not playing active. He's going to join the hit at this B site. That's a fantastic Molotov timing as G2 are lining up, but it won't sway VP setup. Three strong still g2 have a shot norbert phenomenal anchor down here towards the monster side needs to withstand this hit one kill from the man flick now oh. lends a helping hand and even as monacy replies he goes no further vp will tie this up at nine all chaining together two in a row in trouble a feat they've not accomplished in a long while monacy Ooh. 
Bloody hell, talk about a combat save. That AWP at least remains a factor for G2 going forward. Almost death after time as well. That could have been disastrous for Monacy, but... Get out with something. It's still an incredible round again from Norbert at this B site. He's a rock in this position. Spams out Hooksy on the break as well. If Hooksy comes through that smoke, I think he has better odds. Flit saw so many players on short side, and he steps up with a multi-kill as well. VP. Rock solid defense at B, despite only having two players. Ooh. These rounds are sometimes deceptively difficult. Monacy will feel pressure to get involved. Hello. Begging for a jump here, for a chance. This is not a round that G2 win unless Monacy goes nuclear. So I mean, go up the fact that VP win that last round with two players down towards lower is giving them a lot of faith to just leave that b site in the hands of flit and norbert barrel c honestly protractor out tries to line this one up but now they know where that all flies can he get the trade here he kind of desperately needs to but smoke Ooh. in his way so for now fame goes unpunished look at him hide just wasting their time right now. Hunter's going to go through this one. Or at least he tries. It's not even a kill provided. Fame can go back into safety and never offer up this gun to the Glocks. Perfect reposition for Fame. And James, this should be an easy kill to stem the bleeding of this round. Also, in the, in the meantime, Norbert has been like an absolute legend, clearing out all this space down here towards B. That secures VP in this quad upper stack. And so, while there was a world, this orc could have found some picks. Well, now it's got to take part in the exec. Monacy will get run down. Triple swung. And VP deal with it cleanly. It's four from fame. And the lead retaken for Virtus Pro. Three straight with four surviving every time as well. While it looked like this was getting out of their hand, slipping through their fingers after a 6-1 lead. They have regained control of the match now. Cool VP, the hardest team to put away, and they are giving us a, a great example of why. Three rounds of four alive. G2, their bite lacks at all because of the save. VP well and truly in control now. G2, despite winning that force by with a hero AK, going on a bit of a streak. Struggling to break in consistently into this half. VP trying to drag G2, kicking and screaming to Inferno. And it does feel like a perfect storm, a perfect way to finish this quarterfinal. To go back to the map where business was unfinished. And even though this is a matchup Hooksy feels very comfortable calling into for G2, I think VP have somewhat changed the, the nature of their game. There's a lot more mid-round movement. There's these gambles over towards upper that you're seeing consistently, but they just trust the double hold down on B. Oh, Fame Shadow. refusing to let G2 leave a mark. He sits comfortably topping the charts for Virtus Pro and showing no signs of slowing down. Even as Jane will oh. get dealt with, it's all fame in this round. On for the ace. Multi-kill after multi-kill. This Monacy tries to make this play. It all hinges on getting past Flit. He's seen him. He wins that no fight. Way. Survives the cross down in the lower. Has a chance at the bomb plant here. VP will not be able to react to that in time. This is the ball rolling for Monacy. A safe plant. Nets him the bomb to play around. Fame is one kill shy of the ace. It's and it's just time. Monacy left to get past. This re-wrap around awards short. Fame, does he think he hits that timing? Norbert is not considering this. They think they've cleared Monster. They think they've uprooted Monacy. They couldn't be further from the truth. Fame sticking the bomb, but oh! Monacy rips him down! What a what a rotation! Electric play from Monacy, and one that has reignited G2! 
it couldn't have gone better. And they love it. Just sits there and soaks it in. Rounds like that do not come along often. Oh, it just couldn't have been better, could it? Playing the anti-post plant, the bomb is not for him. He forces VP to stick. And right as they think they've cleared it, Monacy's timing is just that little bit better. They call in the flash for a reason. Okay. Can G2 do right? By Monacy. A straight up call out of spawn, the long take with pace. And James Orb once again in the wrong place. He's going to start rotating upper. Leaves his nades for that weak B hold that has been so strong. It's in fact, only Norbert in this round cycling utility. As G2 put the pressure on long, it looks like they just want to straight up execute. If they do, off with their heads, four on upper. He needs something from this JMAWP. Fame 4Kng the last was not enough to keep them in it. And this oh. time, he's dead immediately. Two more. James Orp, now's the time, now or never. Tries to play ahead of the smoke. Ends up backing out of there. Site now conceded, bomb oh, plant found for G2. Molly from Norbert never even leaves his hand, never even comes in. Instead, it's gonna be used now. That'll have no effect on the G2 squad. That tag connects, but they're not able to punish Nico. And VP might just bite the bullet on this one. They write it off. How the hell did G2 win these rounds? Five on four in the A site. They find a double entry instantly. And James' passive play once again pushes him towards the save. He may pick that first man in but he wants nothing to do with winning the round. That is all G2. And they now sit on the precipice of a feat that they could not accomplish in Copenhagen. They can show the, the growth that this team's undertaken. What a bit of extra mileage from Nico can do do to the G2 squad if they can 2-0 VP yeah. here and now. I mean, we've often said that this team needs three of its stars to step up. Three players to have massive game. Right now, it's just two, and that might be enough. Nico Monacy carrying the weight of this whole squad with some of the clutches they've put up. The multi-kills on Nico. G2 can feel it, it's right there, but these are the hardest rounds to obtain. James waited for this moment, flash out along, shot too early, he has to give it up. Really going back for more, G2 are closing the gap, he sees everything and he gets out. He's feeling a lot of pressure, I mean, nothing has worked for him. Can't say forever. Nothing has worked for him in this series. And so him and Fame try to oh. regress, but oh. the flash destroys them. Oh. And Lays waste to the top site. G2 move in, uncontested, unbothered. They brush VP aside like they're nothing. What a flash. And next set is even hunting before that bomb is planted. G2, they don't just want to win the round. They want to win this series. They want to go to those semis. And they want to do it cleanly. They know they can accomplish that goal if they knock out these guns here and now. hooksy has been calling the shots. But now he's looking to remove everything from the tank of VP. And in with this backstab, the chokehold over Virtus Pro. Slam down! VP have nothing! And G2 have it all right there for the taking. And they're going to grab it with both hands. What an opportunity that G2 worked so hard for. We have seen some phenomenal rounds in this series from G2. The superstars performing. Hooksy hitting heads, finding multi-kills, out-cooling Jamie yet again.
again. And may I repeat myself, G2 have never lost to Virtus Pro. They do not plan on doing that today. The tank is dry, just fumes. Final timeout, 2K a player. Virtus Pro are clutching at straws. And this one is, is not like Anubis. It's not like for Virtus Pro that there, there isn't someone making a difference. G2 are doing this while Fame is the top performer in the server, while he's nearly 30 kills deep. going to try and end this with something more up-tempo down towards B, it certainly looks like it, with Nexa right up at the front. They will be playing into the closer ranges versus these SMGs. That's Two the pharmacies adorn this bottom site. Norbert Ouch. nearly burns alive. Oh, that Ooh. nade's going to find him. And so G2, that's the first kill. That one wets the blade. Now they've got to drive the knife in, and Hooksy looks to do exactly that. Playing it back out through short, he will get overran, overwhelmed. So much info, though. They sacrifice the captain, oh. sure. But the rest of G2 are here to withstand the test of time. And VP is sent packing. Monacy is not alone anymore up on these stages. Nico there alongside him as G2 blaze a trail into the semi-finals. It is not even close. Not today. Divine intervention or not, G2 have got VP in the back.